funny. Oh, you're fucking hysterical. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Woodshop podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, like Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all, as well as the podcast, on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 120 of Another Woodshop Podcast, where this week we got a wise guy that moved all the way down to Nashville to be a death metal country star. When that didn't work out, he turned his addiction to coffee into a business. Andrew from Cold Brew is here. That is quite the introduction. Pete is the hypest of all the hype men. He's so good at his job. The but hypest of men. Any of that. I did any not, of that. I didn't even think that that was coming. That was good. No, he's good. Yeah. You should have seen when Jimmy DeResta was on here. Everyone oh, cried. Sloppy. No. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> cried. Yeah. Yeah. Three women in our audience got pregnant. It was unreal. So that, big thanks to our. Uh, by Jimmy. <laughs> by Jimmy. Right. Jimmy went to their house, gave him the what for. Whoa. Um, no. Yeah. He was, he, was, he, he was yelling, making it. It made no sense. Uh, so uh, big thanks to our, our three new patrons. You guys are amazing. Uh, Chappie over at Chappie's Shed. Tim from Lock City Woodworks, VIP patron. You're the man. And Michael Flickinger, also a VIP patron. So you guys are uh, awesome. Did Thank you, just you curse so much. There? I don't know. I'm going to check with the sensors. Have. Hold oh. on. Um, no, I did not. So we big should do the warning already. Uh, we have the yeah. sauciest like pre-show. This yeah. is going to be explicit. Since Jimmy. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I, do you want me to just yeah. get it over with now? Because I'll just. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> let's let it make it naturally, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to get us in the mood first. Is uh, your mouth a bird? Because it is foul. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so. No, big thanks to Andrew for coming on the show. We're really excited to have Andrew here. He's with uh, Cold Brew Woodworking. He, you can find him on Instagram. Also on uh, Instagram. <laughs> and then uh, no, no you can find no you can find him on instagram only fans tiktok all the things actually you're not doing tiktok anymore right you kind of no, dumped I, it out of that yeah i dumped out of that i, I yeah, 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 deal with good. the shit talking it's, yeah it's it's no dice well uh, anyway we're, you gotta yeah. you gotta <laughs> shit talk back that's the fun part oh i know i just couldn't I, I can't handle all the instagram comments and then all the tiktok stuff it's, it's another job oh it's, it's just too much it's too much <laughs> way too much uh, we're gonna get into we have <laughs> a pretty strict show guideline every episode Mm, nothing we don't really deviate from anything so we have to very i go down a list here and i just check off items and the very first one is we have a review segment uh we go into reviews and it starts with this go black betty ramble that's dan dunlap singing (laughs) black betty and we're we're gonna have to be very clear because andrew's never listened to not only our podcast but he's never listened to any podcast in fact he doesn't even know what a podcast is the dictionary definition of what a podcast was so i didn't know until mike actually got me on here and he was like you want to do the podcast and i was like wow it's about time he's like uh i lost so (laughs) you're telling me (laughs) there's radio on the internet yes yeah i I, uh, he said he lost the bet and then he was like well (laughs) is that is that that actually a no and i was like no it's a yes (laughs) yeah then we came on here and andrew was trying to record the his audio on microsoft paint it was wild so anyway (laughs) uh, (laughs) no no he was was doing it in a spire yeah he was doing it in a spire yeah he was trying to edit uh, yeah carve carve (laughs) carve No, but we actually don't have any reviews. Actually, I didn't even check. I'm just going to assume we don't. We don't have so any we're reviews. Not gonna do those. We, I just wanted to play Dan's song because I love when he sings because he's got such a beautiful voice. Perfect. But uh, we next, we usually go into like what's on our bench. We didn't explain any of this to Andrew before the show. No, we did. Uh, Nothing. We, I ready for chaos. <laughs> Basically, we we talk about our week. It's uh, what's on our bench is like, what do you got going on right now? But we're not going to jump into that yet because we want to hear about Andrew. Behind hey, the scenes I, with Andrew. I got some stuff on my bench, but it's kind of on. We're going to get into that. Don't worry. It's going to happen. It's physically, happen. Oh, Dan, it's too, it's too either big for the Dan, bench. either Dan or Max's colon has given out. You? Oh, Max. Max. Okay. All right. Max's, <laughs> Max's colon is has it really? He came back and he gave me a welcome gift. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get you to fall out of your chair again. No, I mean, Andrew, how did you, let's, I mean, give us the quick, like 30,000 foot elevation. How'd you get into woodworking? Tell us all about it. Tell us about you. Uh, Well, I started out 
because I needed furniture in my house that I was buying. Uh, well, I thought I was going to be in an apartment first. Story is all this time. Uh, it is Tales just, all this time. Baby. <laughs> it is just everyone's story. They didn't want to spend money on furniture. So uh, I, made, I made my own. Uh, it was one of those breadboard tables, but, you know, I didn't know how to do breadboards properly. So Pocket I used, holes. I used, no, 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 no. I, I did. Drywall screw straight through. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I used, I think my, I think they were, uh, four inch breadboards so i used like five and a half inch torx like decking screws mm. all the way through the breadboards mm. and, <laughs> but i did have that the, ain't going uh, nowhere oh uh, definitely not so uh yeah I, I did a regular butt glue up uh butt joints and i did the we uh, know about butt joints oh yeah big time but i did the uh i did the screws into the end grain and honestly uh i left it for the uh the lady that bought my house because i I knew I was evolved. And hey, you buy this house. I'll throw in this table. <laughs> It'll take it out nice it is. It's still be- it's beautiful. And she was so <laughs> ecstatic about it. And uh, so that's the reason why I got into woodworking because I wanted to have my own furniture. And then I started building coffee tables and stuff. And then I walked away from it for like a year. And then uh, I got on Instagram and I saw, well, not, not my woodworking Instagram, but just my regular personal one that I don't have anymore. And uh, I saw live edge tables and the epoxy stuff started coming out. And, you know, so I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So I, I picked up my first cherry slab. I think that was uh, May of 19, something like that. I think it was May of 19. I got my first cherry 1906? slab. 1906. Yes, 1906. Um, <laughs> oh, 19. 2019, yes. So, oh. uh, yeah, we had to bring you up a couple of years. So um, I'm yeah. the math guy. It was it was a coffee table and it came out like absolute shit because it wasn't kiln dried right and it wasn't you know like any of that but uh I I got to mess with epoxy I did an epoxy flood coat on it and just kind of took off with interest at least and then I made my Instagram in September of 2019 not 1906 <laughs> and then um, I. I started out just making charcuterie boards I got my first bottle of walrus oil and I got uh, my first red cedar um red cedar pack charcuterie pack from black forest sawmill uh if you guys know sean black over there yeah no i i, I used to buy from them too beautiful stuff yeah. i stepped to still to this day he's actually sending me a nine foot slab uh monday for a bar top oh so. how do they even ship that now because i've only bought crate like the boxes stuff. Right. Crate them up. yep uh not in a crate they actually they just put it um he honestly just takes cardboard and wraps it like he would like anything mm-hmm. else but it gets shipped free so um was right so it just comes, you know, the guy <laughs> comes walking down my driveway with the whole pallet jack deal, you know, um, <laughs> with a slab on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be monster. But uh, yeah, so it, it just kind of <laughs> took off that way. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people that have done it that way, but it wasn't like I just had all of a sudden this interest for it. It just, you know, it needed furniture. I didn't want to spend money. So I've noticed that a lot of people start that way. I, are woodworkers like the cheapest people on the planet or what? It's, I started because I didn't want to pay for furniture, so I thought I'd make it myself. Hey, I became a mechanic. Uh, well, I started an auto body, but I became a mechanic because I didn't want to have to pay $150 an hour. That's the Same reason I became a, a porn star. I didn't want to have to pay for my own porn. Exactly. Exactly. See, that's also back then, back when our time wasn't as valuable. That is pretty is nuts, now. Dan. <laughs> pretty nuts. <laughs> Uh, make sure to listen to the pre-show about the pretty nuts thing. <laughs> That's, the the That's the first one. That's the first one. No, but I, I think be plenty of those. Andrew, it's a good point because like a lot of us got it, got into it that way because we had time. We had time yep. to learn it. We had time to kill and figure it out. Uh, we don't have time now. I think. So I, no. I think as you get more into it, you get busier. You start being like, you know, I'm now I'm going to pay someone to do this. I have lots of time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. So like. Like a it perfect shows, example man. of that is I was a certified master diagnostic technician for Toyota for seven years. And really? I have all of my ASCs all the way up to L1 uh, and reserted. So like I was at the top of, um, I'm Pete, not did saying you want to tell them about your accreditation? I'm not saying I'm I the have best. a level three rogue gnome. Yeah, I'm not, three. <laughs> I, it's funny. I just don't <laughs> know the reference. I got, all right. You have to explain this now. Oh, it's it's a joke I had made a long time ago <laughs> about Pete. We haven't heard that one not... in a long time. <laughs> I know, it was perfect. This. I had to... It's, it's a joke um, I made about, like, oh, an episode heart, yeah. seven about like, Pete. Way back in the day. That, 
it, uh, it's uh, I said Pete's Pete said I, I said Pete's I'm a level three rogue gnome or something about World of Warcraft, some video game or something like that. Oh, it was no. just the only thing yeah. I could think of for the And joke. Dan calls I'm it like World of Wizards or something. Like... <laughs> so good. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. No, I got it written good. down, Dan, for the edit. Don't worry. Perfect timing. Listen, that's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> yeah. you so, not now, Dan, to flex you on your certifications, but I'm kind of a big deal. Okay. Yeah. We just got to make sure Dan's okay. alive. Is no. Dan good? Oh, this is a weekly thing for no, me. Don't no, even worry no, about Dan it. is not <laughs> good. We just have to move past it next This show is to die on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, Just I got to make sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, so perfect example of that. Um, I am doing this full time, obviously. And um, or maybe not, obviously. For everyone that's listening, I'm doing this full time because I'm an idiot and I should have explained that. Um, but, <laughs> you know, as simple as an oil changes, uh, I have a lift at Tacoma and I can just crawl under there. I don't have to use a jack or anything. So, you know, Do as hard flex, as it seems, but okay. as, hard, as, as hard as it's, you know, as easy as it seems to go out there and just do an oil change on it, it takes away from this. And, and yes, I'd much rather just go and spend the extra 20 bucks because it cost me $55 and uh, stuff to do the oil change instead of just going and paying $75 at the dealership. So yep. yeah, yeah, good point. And they can do it in 15 minutes. Exactly. Instead of crawling around on the ground and it's like 110 degrees here, real feel. And uh, <laughs> it's just, feel. yeah. And then you have to get rid of the oil too. So yeah, I would say that um, as you progress, and you start to lose some things aren't worth doing things. for yourself diy right. is cool but exactly. some diy is no point there's no point in doing <laughs> it when there's a place that does it way better or like drywall exactly. if i have to do drywall now like a good amount of it i'm i'm subbing that out oh yeah <laughs> yeah drywall is a pain in the ass so no actually I, I i take that back drywall is way easier than spackling paint oh or pest infestations i'm not doing that <laughs> definitely i don't know pete brought some random thing up i'm just gonna bring up one too <laughs> no i'm just thinking of like stuff that we would do because like we're handy mold like... abatement <laughs> i'm definitely <laughs> hiding <laughs> be moldifying my house no that's yes. definitely hired out oh my god <laughs> sorry so good uh, but yeah that's corporate you know. legal defense <laughs> i'm no, for sure getting a lawyer DIY that's... <laughs> I got a group on to a It's a new class. niche on TikTok. <laughs> Do you have like corporate legal defense? You missed you missed Pete saying he got a group We're, on to a legal a... class. <laughs> I haven't redeemed it, but I have the group on. Yeah. So like it's still good. I have the coupon code. It's good for 16 months. Yeah. Oh my God. They're still in business. <laughs> group on for legal corporate yeah. legal defense. <laughs> it's down at like Jimmy's discount legal advice and tires. Yeah. Mm. And so pie is sold on tires. So. Thank you. No, no, uh, that's awesome. I mean, you know, that's a great backstory. It's always cool to see where people come from, for sure. Like, we always like to ask that question. It's kind of, it's the opener. Like, it it helps to get it. We used to kind of jump into it after what's on my bench and stuff, but we found, we got feedback from people like, hey, we don't really have any. We have no context for this person that's telling us about their week. So we just want to make sure we get in there. I mean, is there anything else you wanted to add? We want to hear. Yeah. About I mean, so what are you doing? I mean, we, what, we did it in the going? um, we did it in the uh, what do you call it? The pre-show. So yeah. uh, just real quick about cold brew. I just want no to fill in everyone you on the uh, real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's true. But uh, the Hurry actual up and take your time. The name itself. Uh, I was making my own cold brew coffee. And my dad was like, well, if you're going to woodwork, why don't you just, and you know, if I'm making coffee tables, why don't you just run with it? And it just became this thing. And honestly, I've gotten so many compliments with this like Mason jar saw blade deal that we came up good with. Brand. And, um, he, he, if you look really closely, it says freshly made coffee tables and more on, on the, <laughs> here. When you, uh, when you so, say you were making your own cold brew, were you just putting Folgers in the fridge or no, nope. <laughs> putting so beans was, in a sock. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go back to the pre-show for all this. Yeah. Um, DVD juice. We gotta, yeah, we gotta, we gotta rewind. Um, but no, it was it was a whole steeping process and everything. You gotta grind them up. You gotta put them in the mason jar. You gotta steep it for twelve hours, and then the filtering. Man, that sounds like a lot of work. It. And it was a it was a job. And you but, know, you could just buy that pre-made, right? Yes, but okay. I was actually I was actually selling it to the guys at work. DIY cold brew. <laughs> I was actually selling it to the guys at work. I would bring mason jars and bring them coffee every morning. That was like a homemade. It's the only reason box. I keep this job so I can sell these guys coffee. Exactly. <laughs> so good. Not the eighteen hundred a week. Just just the five bucks. A, the five bucks a mason jar. Yeah. <laughs> Put my kids uh, in college. Geez. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Let, let's uh let's jump into some Oh no, no. no. What am I doing? Wait. We're not doing any of that. That's silly talk. Calm We're doing down. what's on my bench. Listen, I'm doing it, all right? I've got the button right here. What's on my bench? That's Dunlap singing on what's on my bench. Uh if you didn't know, you've never listened to the podcast before. If your name's Andrew, you would now know that. So, I'm going to actually throw it right to Who invited Andrew? this guy. <laughs> Andrew Yes. What's going on? What do you got going on right now? What are you working on? What do you got going on in the shop? It doesn't have to be in the shop either. Just kind of life. What you got going on? So um, I just finished up. Maybe not finished up. It's it's almost there. I got to do something with the base. But um, I just pretty much completed a seven foot by 40 inch uh, epoxy river table. Um, I know everyone. Either it's looking beautiful. Loves that or hates it. I don't like um, them, but it looks it's good work. <clears throat> So that one was a lot of fun because I got to get, um, you know, all of our friends at Bidwell involved. Um, first of all, with the finishes, um, the pour itself, obviously super clear, but uh, the pigment was the moon dust. And yeah. Oh, that stuff looks dope. Yeah, everyone, it does look good. Everyone was doing, uh, you know, charcuterie boards and stuff with it. And uh, <laughs> super, I had, I, I was slacking with super clear. They got on my ass. So uh, they were like, hey, like, what's going on with all those end grain boards? And I'm like, shit. So uh, I'm like, all right, we're going to go big. We'll go big. So I was like, I'm just going to do this table. And uh, I always wanted to make one with that big spider base. So I had mm -hmm. a uh, local welder here uh, called Elemental Art House. They designed, well, I showed them a picture and then they made it come, they made it come to life here. And uh, I was like super excited about it. And I was like, it's got to be a big thing. So I took two nine foot walnut slabs that I had from Black Forest Sawmill and um, I cut them down to seven foot, made a form, and then I decided to do the moon dust. Um, I got all three of the colors. I mixed them all together, kind of just Ooh. flow them in there and mixed them up and saw what happened. And what you'll see on my page is the final result. And yeah, looks dope. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping that it goes because <laughs> it's an inventory piece and it's a very expensive inventory piece. <laughs> Andrew, you said <laughs> stuff scares me to death. Sorry, Dan. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, Andrew, you said local. Where is local to you? And I think that's an interesting story about how you've jumped around. So yeah, how'd, you, end, how'd um, you move from Long Island to that? <clears throat> aside from the, the, the you know, bet you trying lost. to be an artist no. <laughs> <laughs> to be so, a musician? Yeah. So I mean, Pete, he, he went over that in the in the beginning. Um, no, that that was complete. That was completely Pete. Um, but I, I I do actually play death metal, but I didn't come down here for music purposes. Like um, Nickelback. Yes, Nickelback. Um, so Nickelback I, I, lived, I lived on Long Island and I was just, you know, too close to the city. I was just, I will actually, it's funny because I'm actually closer to Nashville than I am. Uh, I was to actual New York City. <laughs> Stupid. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I just was tired of Long Island. I was there for a while. I needed a change and everything. And I came down here. Um, I moved in with my girlfriend at the time. And mm -hmm. um, now uh, I got my wood shop here. And I actually do enjoy Nashville, so I'm about 20 minutes outside of Nashville, uh, where the shop was that did the welding is dead smack in Charlotte Avenue um, in Nashville. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's super nice here. Everything is a lot like, you know, it's not really as fast paced. Um, that's kind of what I was trying to get away from. Uh, yeah. I wanted to be in more of an environment where everything was kind of more relaxed and uh, less expensive, but... You know, now that it's 115 degrees, uh, your utilities start to take over the cost of living. So, uh, you know, that doesn't really help. But so I shot myself in the foot there. But maybe build a bunker. <clears throat> DIY bunkers. DIY well, bunkers. It's pros and cons. I mean, yeah. Some if, I if I insulated my shop a little better, then, uh, you know, it'd stay a little cooler in here. But I got the AC blasting on 72 and it's only 85 degrees in here. So <laughs> I feel your pain on that. Yeah. It's the worst. Same. It is. But yeah, That's I'm rough. and nothing uh, you know, I really just wanted to get away from the city. That was the biggest thing. I was selling my house and taking advantage of the market and uh came down. Smart. Yeah. Nice. I thought That's I cool, thought man. so. And I got to dump all my money into buying a saw stop and all Bitcoin. Sort of stuff. Oh. So <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. no, no, not Bitcoin. Nope. <laughs> uh we're working tools. I lost all my money in Bitcoin. Infinity and all this other stuff that you know. Oh, you have a one infinity as well. Yeah. Oh, fun. I hear they're good machines. Right there. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Love PD, it. PD, what do you got going on this week? Me? Well, is yeah. it done? Are you done? I think. 
I, don't I, know, I, assume, I assume he's done. I was trying yeah, to be I mean, a he seamless he transition so, there. Yeah, Thank you for seen, ruining it. No one, no one wants, no one wants to then. see me do the epoxy <laughs> art. You know, like the the whole wave thing. I got an order for like twenty. I do. Oh, but talk do. about that. That's that's so important because like you always got so much going on. So yeah, like, but still, I mean, no one wants, no wants to see me, you know, in yoga pants and doing the whole. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I do. I said it short. I've been a subscriber to your OnlyFans for 16 months. <laughs> the only one, oh, only top man. tier. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I do the I do the waves and all that other stuff. I mean, that's part of that's like part this? of it. That's part of it. <laughs> yeah, the that wave. Um, but the very, epoxy art, I don't really, I don't very like visual. Journey. I don't like to advertise, you know, that I do it because Dude, I don't want to get stuck orders. doing it. It's still keeping yeah, you busy, you know. It's, that's it's, true keeping a shop that's actually smart you know you don't want to advertise that you do one certain thing because you'll get stuck doing it like i know several people do that including myself i don't advertise some things that i do like yeah um yeah i don't want to get pigeonholed (laughs) (laughs) okay yeah um it definitely Uh, becomes repetitive and then you start i'm the type of person that like you know, it gets, gets bored with us with the same projects mm-hmm. very easily. And I like to kind of bounce around. So if I'm stuck do I, right now, I'm doing 10 of the, actually it was 10 Florida boards and then it was 10 regular boards. Uh, but they all had the waves and I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, you're standing 10 boards at a time and you're like, Oh, come on. Like, just let's get over with it. But, uh, then I was just like, you know what? I'll just build a $10,000 table as inventory. Why not? I mean, nice. So, so what, you, what, you don't even have a client for that table. You're just hoping that somebody buys it. Yep. I, uh, I, I yikes. So if you're looking for a table, <clears throat> hit him up, reach out to me. Let me know. So um, what, what's some other I'll stuff that's a deal like for 30%? <laughs> yeah, for 30%. <laughs> um, so what, you know, you're saying like you, you do some stuff that you're not posting all the time. Like what is putting bread on a table, you know, meat on a grill? Like what is the thing that like, maybe you don't post a lot, but like you make a lot of us i mean is it just cutting boards or other so, stuff are you doing other work on the side i i post i post everything that i do for the most part mm-hmm. um but i just don't like push it that much um i i have the listings i do have an etsy as well i i, I restarted that because I, I do want multiple streams of uh you know people coming in so i did start my etsy page up again i just hiked up the price because you know etsy wants to play yeah. games like that um <clears throat> And then I have my website as well, but it's not so much. I don't like post it or anything like that. It's more just, I don't want to, you know, be the, be the resin artist. I mean, look at me. Yeah. I'm I'm not, I'm not the type of person that you're going to look at and be like, he does ocean waves, you know, like that's not what I really want to (laughs) be. That's not what I want to be really known for. So it's nothing against them. I do them and I respect the shit out of them. There's people that do way better ones than I do. Um, But uh, so most of my stuff is uh, it's not where and, your heart is. Yeah. Exactly. And grain cutting boards is uh, a big thing of mine, uh, especially now that I'm doing the, uh, the actual end grain wood inlays with the CNC. Um, I'm basically just my epoxy charcuterie boards was what made me who I am today. And uh, I still continue to like to do those. So that mm-hmm. and jewelry boxes, I make the burl boxes now with the epoxy and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's a wide variety of stuff. Well, maybe not wide, but it's a good variety of stuff. Um, that just keeps it coming. You never know. That's cool. Oh. Yeah. I'll cool. make a, I'll make a dog. I'll make one of those, you know, dog crates, one of those, uh, big. You'll make anything. I'll a make kennel. anything. I'll make whatever. Yeah. Kennel. There you go. Um, yeah. Kennel media center. <clears throat> yep. Exactly. Slash I'll do barber chair. As long as it's not. <laughs> As long as it's not cabinetry and as long as it's not some table that I can't really fit. Or drywall. Right. Or drywall. That drywall. is a no. From what I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. In the Corporate yeah. well, legal. No, stackle. Things. Stackle's worse. Stackle's <laughs> worse. Stackle's worse. Yeah. Yep. But, All right, yeah. Pete. Go All right, for I'll it. go. Ahead. Um, so, I mean, I've just been, I've been slammed with uh, Etsy orders this week. I don't know what's happening. Um, well, I sent out, I guess I sent out a bunch of samples of the, like the sander holder and a bunch of people have been posting them and that can drive another traffic. So I've been trying to pick up uh, my workflow a little better. Dan, you okay? Uh, that's right. Oh, I just realized I haven't posted that's, mine yet. It's fine. I, I sent it out to people for honest feedback. Um, you know, getting people to repost and like talk about it is like just a nice little bonus. Um, but it, you know, it, it's been, uh, it's been busier than it's been a little bit. And I'm kind of like, cause I talked last week about holidays coming up and having to make stuff for that. I'm like my workflow right now in there is, is good, but it could be way better. So, um, are you the first Christmas guy? First Christmas. 
are you the are you the first Christmas are you the first guy on Instagram to announce Christmas gifts? Probably. I don't know, but like because it's probably. July. Because I know so July, early. but it's like so you know, there's people that I, I I follow that are already talking about getting they're getting Christmas orders because they have their ornaments or whatever on their site or their Etsy yes. shop, and like there there's people already buying from them, and I'm like, wow, this is uh, it's coming up. But also for just regular sales, even before I had like ornaments or whatever, the holidays make my year on Etsy. Like yeah. I'll sell more in those three months from like November to January than I do the rest of the year sometimes. So, of course. so I, you know, I want to get my workflow down. Uh, I need to, I, I got a couple more 3d printers set up uh, down there already. So I need to figure out just how to lay them out. I actually got to run like annoying maintenance. Like I got to tune them. I got to update the firmware. Maintenance stuff. I, is keep the putting, I hate it. Yeah. So it's like, it, I keep putting it off, but it's, that's literally going to be an entire day of just sitting there and, and doing that stuff. Um, but I've, I've been trying to do a lot of more designs, just try to, um, you know, mix it up a little bit, but I have so many little things right, right now that it's all distracting me from working on and wrapping up some of these projects. But I actually, I had a customer drop off. Uh, I was making these like ice climbing training tool <clears> things that are a lamination of like wood. So it's Baltic birch, metal Baltic birch, and we screw it together, round it over, clean it up and I laser it uh, and I deliver it finished to them. They just dropped off another order of them. So this is a client from a couple of months ago where you know they asked me what what it would be i told them my price and then i once i learned how long it would take to do everything and the labor involved i was like oh god guys yeah, honey finish off them. yeah i was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i had to give them the uh the pretty nuts price after that it's i was like pretty nuts pretty <laughs> nuts <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I like learned my value. It was like one of those like worst and best jobs I've ever done. Uh, and I quoted them ridic that ridiculous price, the FU price. And uh, they came back like three weeks ago and they're like, Hey, can we do another batch? At, I'm like at the new price, it would be this. And they're like, okay. O okay. It's not cool. an FU price that. if it's just your price. No, no, it's not. No, but, but <laughs> it was like two and a half times what I charged them initially. And they still, like, it was a corrective again. It was a corrective price yes, adjustment. Correct. <laughs> so, that sounds much better than FU price. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that <laughs> it's is very, very political. Very. No, 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 no. But, we don't call it that anymore. Yeah. It's a corrective price adjustment, sir. It's pretty nuts. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, it, it's good. So uh, the nice thing is I'll be able to actually get some help in the shop and um, uh, Jake's going to come in and help me out to get this stuff wrapped up. But I, I got Jake a few who? months too. Hmm? Jake who? Jake. You just say Jake like we all oh, know. Jake Sorry. from State Farm. Jake from State Farm. Yes. Uh, Jake. <laughs> From JV Woodworks, Jake Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, Jake's going to be coming in and help out in the next couple of weeks. It's just a little tough because I, I was looking at my calendar for the next two months and almost every weekend I have something planned or some trip or somewhere. Um, there might be like another maker meetup happening soon. Basically every yes. weekend until uh, maker camp is almost booked. Like I have one free weekend. So a lot of this stuff needs to get done during a week. I just got to get better on that. And then the rest of the stuff, I've just been doing like super lame house stuff. We set up our gym in the basement where uh, we have to, we're planning out actually studs and drywall for the basement because we're going to be framing everything out and actually making it. <laughs> with your, little. with your basement gym, I'm picturing the gym that Dwight set up in the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. With the door that locks from the inside. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's no, no, super, that was the, that oh, was, that the, was the kids. Yeah, it's the kids, yep. <laughs> no, it's super classy. So There's good. like an old carpet on the ground. It's nice. But we have, I have a bike there. I'm able to do the Apple fitness thing. It's, it's nice, but it's all boring stuff. It's like household chores again. Uh, Mike, what are you up to? Ooh, uh, we finished up insulation this week. That was horrible. Horrible insulation is the worst. I really hate insulation. You uh, know, I got that to, idea to, for next time. Hire, hire, that hire that out. You know how much it was? How much the quote was for that? Ten thousand dollars. That's how much my table is. <laughs> yeah. Order. Yeah, I could Some trade work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. My buddy Andrew's got a table for you. He'll let me have it so I can get my insulation up here. Yeah. No, well, was I was gonna, gonna say, say have Andrew do it and then he can give you the table for ten thousand. That <laughs> makes well. sense. This is great. Nope. You're this like is going, uh, this is going good. I'm a negotiator well. as well. This is the negotiator. <laughs> the negotiator. No, we, <laughs> We got a uh, Sean and I did it. It took Sean and I three days. It was really miserable. I was getting up. I've been getting up early all this week, get, going straight out there. What's early insulation. to you? Like, not six. you're an early guy anyway. 
I've been get up at five thirty this Ugh. week for it, oh. and then I I get out there at like oh. I get out there at like six thirty or seven oh. after I run. Oh. Andrew, what's early for you? Oh man, dude, when you work for yourself, oh, I, well, not not for yourself. come on, tell so today, today, today I woke up at four a.m., but that was because I had a what and the I woke up. hell? That was it. I well, nightmare. But a regular up, like early day, um, what is it? Regular early day, I'd say is earliest seven thirty. <clears throat> Okay. Like I'm not out of bed until like eight fifteen. Yeah, that's that's oh, about, that sounds more reasonable. Yep. Yeah, Mike's a So beast. I've I've been finding myself working super late at night mm. after I'm done with work, and I'm I'm it's getting worse mm. and worse. I'm working later and later and later after I get done with the shop. I'm doing more and more computer stuff, and I found that getting up earlier is allowing me to have more time in the morning to get the computer work done, and then I don't work on it in the evening. So it's just a better workflow for me. Uh, but this week was rough, though. I was working, getting up early, going out. I was getting up, running, going out to do insulation. And then when Sean and I would get done with insulation after like eight, nine hours of that, then we were going into the shop and working for like four or five hours. It was a really rough week. But we got the insulation is done. Plywood all gets delivered tomorrow. I've got like 40 sheets coming. We're going to sheathe all the walls all the way up to the ceiling. <clears throat> and then it's next will be electric. Have you thought so. about doing drywall? Andrew likes it. Yeah, I, uh, I actually for all your drywall needs. I actually looked at at drywall because it's like one eighth the price of the plywood. It's like thirteen dollars a sheet for the plywood, not white one eighth, but like a twenty percent of the price. Thirteen dollars sheet like, for the plywood? What? For the drywall? Sorry, it's like oh, thirteen dollars okay. a sheet for the drywood. <laughs> I was like, My heart was all fluttering. Uh, I was like, I'm, I'm coming the with plywood. The plywood's <laughs> fifty bucks a sheet, and it was, yeah. it was thirteen bucks for the for the drywall. And I was like, yeah, and then I was either. like. No, oh, it's half I get, inch. I get really good oh, price. Yeah, it's half inch. It's half oh, inch gotcha. uh, white gotcha. birch. So I'm just it's birch? just for the walls. Yeah, white birch. It's a nice ply too. I know it's nice. So it's it's uh it's paint grade white birch. It's not, or not paint grade. It's it's a uh, it's grade grade B two. You want to hear what so, I paid today? What? I paid. I I believe it was the same grade. Um, maple one fifteen a sheet. Three quarter. Yeah, maple <laughs> maple for that would be probably like ninety bucks here for that. Great. Anyway, so I got I got cool. those coming tomorrow, but tomorrow morning Matt, my uh, Matt and I are going in the morning to deliver this white oak table we just finished today. I that white oak table is so oh with the sick. fun base. <clears throat> yeah, that table is so sick. Dope. Dope. I mean, it's so I, awesome. I, that table is not my style, but the 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 time Sean and I put into that table, so like I'm so proud of that table. Like the in the what really what really made that table not such a nightmare was the design time I put into it because I, all the, the joints. For, so the tip, I don't know if this is going to work very well on a podcast, but for the people watching, so that arch, mm -hmm. that arch on it, you can't tell, but where that other knee brace arch hits into it. I made that flat on the template. So it's a flat spot for the glue up. So nice it's 90 so degrees. Can't even, yeah. So you have a perfect glue up. So they're both flat. It's a flat joint up against each other. So, but on the, on the profile line, your eye follows that that arch still, so you don't even notice that it's a flat. Yeah, you can oh, barely I feel deceived now. What was your inspiration, in a, in a what was your inspiration for that table? Uh, Money. That five different table bases that the customer sent me that oh, they really? like. I, I I made an amalgamation and of all of the nickel like bag. Dude, and I, nickel, I, I, honest, nipple front. Honestly, like that is that is some serious woodworking, man. Like that is it, honestly like. Yeah, you sent it in the um, – I think you might have sent it in the uh, – what do you call it In the first? group. In the group, in the Bibbo group. Yeah, yeah. I was like, holy shit. He's got it, a CNC and a domino. He's not a real woodworker. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, doesn't we, matter. That is serious. So the the glue up we had was, was stressful. Anyway, it was really cool. Really cool table. I really hope we can get more of them. I really want to make it like a thing. I really liked it. The, the – I don't like the finish choice. I mean, I like the finished product we use, but I don't, they wanted like a, they, we did a charcoal base and then a, a, a lighter gray top. Um, I would have liked it to be all uniform, but it's not my table. Yeah. So, I um, noticed that right away. I was like, well, that's yeah. different from. My yeah. So it was not me. It's not my table. Also, right. I wanted a, I wanted a big, a massive under bevel. And I had, <laughs> what I was going to do was, this is actually Eric Curtis's idea. He was up here last weekend or the weekend before or something. Oh, nice. So what I was going to do is Netflix giant, star. Yeah. Eric Netflix Curtis? star, Eric Curtis. He was, he was here. And I was trying to like, we were trying to workshop how to make this giant under bevel on this <clears> thing. And he's like, he's like, Oh, make a jig to hold your biscuit joiner at 90. And the biscuit joiner is going like this. 
and then you crank it to the side and run it along the edge of the thing with like an edge stop. So with an edge guide, so it has like a feeler bearing along there and the biscuit joiner will cut that profile along the whole edge, but you're pushing up against the feeler. I'd have to sketch it out, but it was, I had built the thing for my lamello. Uh, my lamello was going to be able to do it. It was going to be perfect, but the, the customer didn't want that. that oh, profile. I was going to say that would have made so amazing content. The co- this, the video yeah. would have been sick. Like the, the little jig I made, because I'm going to try to do it on you another You should do table it anyway. Soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it soon on another table because the, the jig is awesome. You can use just a biscuit <laughs> joiner or the lamello. It doesn't matter. But does um, the jig, sick. like, does it stand up or whatever? It stands the lamello up. So the jig is up. The jig is up. Uh, I'm trying to work that in somehow. It's pretty Thank nuts. You. I got to jump in. What is the lamello? Uh, uh, lamello is really nice it's a candy bar. Joiner. No, it? it's not a biscuit joiner. It's it's uh, Lamello is the pe- is that's the joiner. company that. No, it's not. Lamello makes a biscuit joiner. Okay. This machine is not the biscuit joiner. This is a uh, the Lamello Zeta P2. It it's like got six different systems to it, and it cuts a, a T T shaped slot into the wood. You'll have to look it up, but it, it cuts a T-shaped slot in the wood. It's for cabinet work. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty pricey machine, but uh, for cabinet work, it makes it really fast. How they have these T-shaped. Co- the blade is shaped like a T, mm-hmm. and when it so it, the blade is shaped like a T, and when it gets to the full depth, it does a wiggle and oh. it cuts that T with the oh, blade, cool. and then comes. Oh, that's back. That's how everything clips in. Okay. Got yeah. It. So wiggle, everything wiggle. clips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My lamello don't wiggle, wiggle. Oh, anyway, uh, don't, so. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Well, then your lamello don't work, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was doing my, I was doing my, my TikTok. Real. Okay, so they no, have uh, two machines. It's one is the lamello. For well, they the have a, answer. they have a biscuit joiner, and then a, but they, the Zeta P2 is what I have. They invented the biscuit joiner, so the they have a biscuit joiner, but the the Zeta P2 is the machine I have, and it has multiple systems in there with that T slot. It is, the it's a That's sick cool. machine. Um, but it uh, but I was gonna use that to cut that shape and I've got the jig done and everything. It was, it was Eric's idea, hundred percent. It, it would work perfectly. So, um, but the customer was like, we want a Roman OG. And I was like, what? Look, I was like, look, we can't, <laughs> I, I didn't say it to him. And you know what? The guy actually, I can't oh, listen to the show. Him? You hate him. No, no. He's a great guy. The customer. No, 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 awesome. no, 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 not the, not the customer. Oh, the OG. Yeah. Yeah. It's How not, can you hate the OG? OG three. Come um, on. so we, <laughs> But I was like, hey, look, I just don't think because it's got that bevel and then the round, right? Yep. This and I was trying to push a bevel, which was the wrong course for the design on this thing. This thing should not have hard lines. It needed because it has those sweeping legs. It needed the cove. So he was like, what about a cove? So we did the cove on the underside. I think it looks great with this table. I think it's a great, a great look for this table. Anyway, we're delivering that tomorrow. Plywood's coming. And then next week we're starting on um, we're starting on a big L-shaped bench. Uh, it's like a farmhouse style thing. It's like, it's a cabinet piece bench. It's like a bench for a dinette, like a nook mm-hmm. bench. Um, mm. And it's going to be L-shaped, like seven and a half feet by five and a half feet. And then that's we're doing the dining nook. table. <laughs> I hope you got, hope, that's a big trunk you got there. I hope I can fit my bike in it. Big nooks. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that movie? I should probably I don't know. know. Anyway. <laughs> I, I'll, find, so I'll pull the audio for you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pull the audio for you, Dan, to put at the end of the show. Um, uh, is it? This is forty. Well, anyway, uh, it's Paul Rudd for sure. Um, and that blonde chick. Now I got to know what it is. But anyway, Luke Bryant. We're, it's it's Luke the guy Bryant. from Dogwood Custom Build. Or is that Brian Luke? Anyway, it's Brian um, Luke. <laughs> no, we. Uh, Luke Bryant's a country singer. I think. Oh yeah, that's or right. a rodeo star. I don't know. He's a country singer for sure. No, we. Uh, you might live doing here. the. We're doing the bench, we're doing the table, and we're doing the seats. And then right now we got the grounding boxes going on. And then I don't think I said it last week, but maybe I did. But we got everything dialed away for those uh, Monopoly boxes. We're doing 55 of those. Uh, But the wood is all ordered. That's going to be here in a week. Uh, But the customer just informed me that the order of 55 is going to actually be an order of 100. They're ordering 45 more. So uh, he he told me by asking me if we could do – he wants each box like one of 100. So we're going to be engraving each one. Like, so it's a series. So they're a limited run. This, this will only be a hundred. That's all we'll ever do with these boxes. And then it's done. So once we're done with these, we'll get these other 45 going. And then the Which game is, cool. is life boxes. <laughs> yeah. Then it's life. Opoly. It's just a total. <laughs> life. Then Crap, shoots a ladder. <laughs> Opoly. Yeah. <laughs> shoots the ladders next. Shoot, yeah. It's going to be great. No, I, I wouldn't mind doing them there. Now that 
now that we have like all the prototyping was the hardest part, like getting the customer to agree to everything was such a slow process. Um, but it was, but I get it. This is this guy's vision. It's his dream coming to life. He doesn't have the ability to do it. Someone else has to bring his vision. You're to not going to get sued by Hasbro or anything like that, right? I have or nothing whoever. to do with. I have nothing to do with it. I'm manufacturing <laughs> something. I didn't make the game board or the game pieces. I'm literally making a box and a banker's tray. So that has nothing to do with me. Um, and my customer is an LLC, then, so I think they yeah. know what they're doing. And then <laughs> later you can uh, have in your Etsy shop like banker's trays. Yeah, Baker's, Baker's Trade tray game. Or... <laughs> Baker's one game? of 3,900. <laughs> uh, it's going to be good. Yeah, one of 3,980 <laughs> or till we need to increase the number. No, it's... Uh, <laughs> we got that going on. It's crazy. Um, that's it. I'm not going to talk about anything else. Shop stuff. Uh, Dan? Oh, is it my turn finally? Is Dan not got Well, yet? I actually have more to talk about than coffee. You ready? Buckle up. I don't. I called BS. Uh, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, Etsy, Etsy, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Etsy's keeping me busy. I'm very happy with that. Uh, we were just talking about the holidays and how the holidays generate the most income on Etsy. And I, I'm super stoked to see what the holidays bring this year because I've been making a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with the holidays. So I'm wondering if that'll drive more traffic still. Mm-hmm. Time will tell. Um, You're gonna have a crazy holiday season, dude. Yeah, I hope so. Store. You better start I, brainstorming some project, some products I right like now. Zero money. naps. No I naps like for money. You, no, that um, still take zero naps. naps. Come on. Enjoy your February delivery on your Christmas ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, oh, oh, all these Christmas, damn 2023. You just dropped that uh that Laguna piece today, right? You just did the um the saw the saw clearance. Insert. Oh yeah, the zero clearance insert <laughs> yep. for the Laguna F1 F2. F2. Yeah, so nice. you're basically doing F1 all F2. It. They're the same, right? Probably. They might. The insert, I think. I'm sure. Yeah, are. I got that file from. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. I got that file from Jake over at a sweet shop. Uh, he nice. was kind enough to share that with me, and he said, "Hey, put it on your store." And I was like, "Here, have a saw stop file." So we switched files. Um, so Love yeah, it. if you want to buy that file, go hit up Jake. Do you have the Powermatic um, yet, or no? Never got it. Do I have the power medic? I don't know. If not, I'll get you to measurements. Oh, I got the I dimensions for the PM two thousand. I just haven't cut it yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I got I got the dimensions when I was over at my buddy uh, Bill Bill Big Bill Macbeth big for from Bill, Artisan Made Bill Designs. Burr. Not Bill Burr. No, he's not real big actually. But that Bill Burr, he's a small guy. Um, <laughs> I ran into him once on the streets of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Anyway, that's another story for another time. Always drop name dropping the people you meet <laughs> where you live, like Warren Buffett's uh, best friend. <laughs> I don't even know what you said. I didn't even Warren hear. Warren Buffett, um, your best friend. <laughs> oh yeah, my neighbor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we me and me and Warren. We're besties. We have hot dogs together. It's, it's a good time. Ugh. I call him Buffett. It's like that gif. He just throws a pop in your face. <laughs> Can you imagine Warren Buffett being? <laughs> The uh, hot dog face gift. <laughs> How's our lawyer? You got him handy? Yeah. Lawyers are um, on. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh last Sunday, this past Sunday, I went to an open house for a local Sawyer. That was really fun. Um, talked to him for a while. He showed me his inventory and, and I wa- I walked around, did some stories, got some free uh food, which is always nice. Uh, I did pick oh, up a when? new slab. I picked up a, I picked up a, it's like seven feet long by 36 inches walnut slab. And someday I'm going to make that into my new desk. Someday. For some reason, I thought you said, I misheard. I didn't realize that was seven foot long. That That is a really pretty slab. That was cool. That's a cool graph. It's got a lot of figure in it. It's going to take a lot of epoxy. So I'll be hitting up total boat for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but that's probably going to sit for like over a year, I would imagine. I, I just don't have time to get to it right now. It's yeah. it's one of those future projects that I want to get to someday type type of thing. Because the desk I'm at now, I made this desk, man, six six or seven years ago. I mean, it's nice, but I think it could be nicer. Um, Not and then I, I did some more. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like river table desk. Yeah. Maybe I'll uh, hit up Andrew. Elongated and get some, body of water. Get some pro table. tips on the epoxy porn. Let's go. Yeah. And then uh, I did some uh, 
custom bow ties for another local woodworker. He's working on this uh, a very large bar top for a local hunting lodge. It's like a very prestigious, like private club. He showed me pictures mm -hmm. of it. It's like insane. Um, <clears throat> but he wanted something hunting themed that he could inlay and, and use a, as a bow tie. And I came up with, I came up with two options, uh, pheasants and antlers. And the pheasants seem to work really good. So uh, I went, oh, I went by his shop today, dropped off more pheasants, and he was actually inlaying them while I was there. And I should have got pictures and videos, but I didn't because I'm a bad content creator. But <laughs> it worked out really well. It looks really nice. So I'll probably be offering those on my Etsy store nice. in the future. Nice. And then I picked up some more slabs from another local Sawyer that was across the street. I have a problem, I feel like. And oh. I feel like all these local people wood know that- Wood makes a great backdrop, backdrop for your- family. It really does. In, the, in a wood shop, you know, you want to have slabs in the background. It makes right. you look more legit. I have many slabs. Yeah, many look slabs. at all the wood I work Smells with. Smells like rich mahogany. Like Andrew, I don't walnut. know, what does he sell? Lights? I don't know. That's all I see. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I feel like- I feel like all these local <clears throat> woodworkers and sawyers and stuff know that if I show up and they give me a beer, I'll buy things. I feel like the the memo got sent around. Get him a little drunk. Because I stopped it. <laughs> I stopped at three places and I got three beers, maybe more, and I ended up buying things and I I wasn't planning on buying. So That's usually how it happens. I feel like there's a little known known thing around town. Hey, if he shows up, just give him a beer. He'll walk In out case with... of Dunlap, break glass. And it's like a little <laughs> yes! refrigerated thing. With beers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bottle opener. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going camping tomorrow. That's yeah, exciting. I'm going there camping go. tomorrow oh, nice. too. Or Saturday. Yeah. Air camping. Where are you going? Oh, just Where locally. Going? Uh, oh. It's a little lake in Iowa. It's a lake we've gone to since we were kids. So it's going to be pretty fun. Nice. Cool. Back when we were kids growing up and we had no money and we slept in canvas tents now we get to go with our fancy campers nice that's, that's dope. dope word flex my like camper has a fireplace just saying seems Ooh. unnecessary to flex Wait, on does it set, really <laughs> yeah it does it has a fireplace that's awesome yeah, fire, like propane driven oh it's a fake fireplace but it does blow oh, off heat it's oh, it blows off heat oh it, it's, it's, it's like, like a, it's like it's an led screen light. yeah the led screen <laughs> but it blows off heat it's a fireplace so you have a light that puts out heat. Yeah, you have a hot light in your. <laughs> so it's a light. Why you gotta? Why you That's gotta cool. downplay this? It's a fireplace. No, we're not. I'm just. No, no, I just no, would no, like no. to clarify what it actually is. You know, just maybe have my some camper facts. also <laughs> has a shower. I might add. Well, so there you go. A hose outside. <laughs> there is a hose outside. Actually, keep the hose outside. <laughs> Both. I got two. Yeah. Anyway, he's all his hose in different area codes. Anyway, we're gonna jump into the question <laughs> segment. Uh, so we're gonna. Go oh, I guess I'm done. Oh, were you yeah. not done? I'm sorry, Dan. I'm done. Go ahead, Mike. He just spun yeah, the chair uh, the for anyone not watching. <laughs> <laughs> he just spun the chair. He spun the chair. Yeah, he crossed his arms. That was that's, perfect. That's perfect. peak pissed Dunlap. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, the, let's uh, let's jump into our questions here. We got yeah. our first question is from Richard. Hey boys, this is Richard from RJ Woodworks. It's at RJ Woodworks on Instagram. RJ Hammy. This question came about because a few yeah. weeks ago I had a buddy over. We were having some beers, and he saw a dado cut on a piece of wood in my garage, and said, "Hey, how'd you make that?" So I was like, "Oh, real easy." I just walked over to my table saw, flipped it on, and then immediately shut it off. And went through my mind was, "Well, that was almost really stupid. What were you thinking?" So my question to you guys is, when's the last time? that thought has crossed your mind well that was stupid could have been really bad but maybe you caught yourself before it was too late doesn't have to be woodworking related but that's kind of what i was thinking maybe you almost ruined a project maybe it was safety related maybe your kids are driving you up the wall so you walk out grab your dress to ice pick and weigh the pros and cons of a diy <laughs> vasectomy who knows anyway, up and listen. it's cheaper to have someone else do it i love then that I, I don't know why, but I feel like this is in your wheelhouse. What? Uh... Oh, it's, this is absolutely in my wheelhouse. First of all, like when we pre-listened to the questions in the pre-show, um, when we pre-listened to this one, not only was it a little quiet, but um, I couldn't figure out what he did wrong at first. <laughs> like he was telling his story and I'm like, so what did he do wrong? I don't, I don't get it. Why did he, he turn it off? That's what was wrong. He never should no, have no, turned no. that thing off. He Chicken should have just making the cut. <laughs> he had beers, and then he started up his table saw. That's the wrong. Apparently, that's frowned upon. 
uh, <laughs> after talking to the guys, I know that is wrong now. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> after reading the room, I now know I shouldn't drink in her towels. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Saw Stop, hit me up. I'd like you as a sponsor. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, man, I've done so many things. Like We all have. Yeah, I just yesterday just yesterday so i'm gluing up these faux beams still that i'm i'm going to be putting in somebody's home they're over 12 feet long at this point and i i was gonna get longer i'm not ruling it out oh not ruling it out um however uh so (laughs) um i i was i had them very precariously like balanced on my bench to to do the glue up and accurate one of the <laughs> one of the pieces uh 12 feet long by six inches one of the bigger pieces uh fell off my bench and hit my ankle yesterday Ooh. i don't know if you know this or not but if you follow me in stories flip-flops. or anything really yeah i wear flip-flops 100 oh. percent of the time i don't even care Coward. um so yeah it hit me in the ankle it hurt like a yach like, well i could say bitch. we got andrew here <laughs> um he's like he's yes, already sir. christened us yes, um sir. so i yelled out a curse word the f-bomb in my garage with the doors open and uh, i picked it up put it back up on the bench and like almost immediately as i was trying to set it back up into place fell again hit me in the same damn spot in the ankle <laughs> oh my god i lost my ever loving mind and my ankle's swollen right now you're it talking sucks. and all i hear is like benny hill music <laughs> 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 should have been recorded this it, it might actually be in my security cameras if oh i go back far enough uh Please but yeah i was check. i just like lost my ever loving mind just screaming and my wife was like what the hell happened out there <laughs> don't ask i just surprised i can walk at this point yeah that's just the latest incident and that was yesterday so I, I, <laughs> i've had so many accidents i've forgotten about most of them oh my God. it's like lunch i can't remember what i had for lunch two days ago <laughs> anyway Andrew, what about you? Oh, there's been plenty. Um, so if anyone has been following me for a while, they would know that I actually did get my fingers caught in a table saw and I got very, very, very lucky. Do this um, for me. Oh, Oh no, no, no. We're good. No, oh. it, it was just, it, I played, I played the, just the tip, just the tip game. Um, <laughs> so I got, I got, I got my uh, pointer and my middle on my right, right hand. And uh, it was, because I was not paying attention. We call um, that the growler I, domestic. I you have to you have to tell me what it is. Oh, um, <laughs> our, no, no, our no. buddy Jordan was on the show. Yeah. He just he just lost literally just or he that. took out a massive chunk of his finger oh, like a few was, weeks no, back it was on just the sauce. So it wasn't like, like yeah, but not... it was like sliced down his finger. I mean, oh it was, no, yeah. no. But it's all there. He's all good. So all no nerve all damage. Yeah, yeah. he can still do everything. Dude, yeah. I just caught the tips of my fingers and I was like down for a week. It was, it, it sucked ass, it really did. Um, but yeah, like it happened and then I just, you know, immediately shut everything down. And I thought that the piece of wood that had slid past me because it was kickback that really <clears throat> got me. Um, I, I forgot to put my riving knife back in because for whatever reason, I was using this, you know, rigid job site table saw and had a crosscut sled. But I guess I didn't like, I didn't know. So I, I raised it up in the back and then pushed it, you know, to actually make the, the clearance cut. Mm-hmm. And I'd never went this way with it to actually cut the back. So I had to take my riving knife out. Um, but I wasn't paying attention. I took the sled off. I put the uh, riving knife. I went to go put the riving knife back in, completely distracted, forgot. And I went to go make a cut. Uh, it, you know. It binded up. I went to go push it through and it started to come back, but I jumped out of the way. And when I went to go jump out of the way, I put my hands down on the table saw and Ooh. I, and it was, it was on top of the wood that was kicking back. So when I just got my hands out of the way, I thought that I was just like, you know, a, a, a jointed cut at least because, you know, edges are sharp, but I realized it got me. So um, we all have those moments and it happens to the best of everybody. And I know that there's a bunch of people out there that go, Oh, you know, saw stop guys, what? you know, <laughs> until it happens to you, you know, then it's, it's like, shit's going to happen. But uh, yeah. an oh shit moment lately, I'd have to say, I had a bunch of offcuts that I was doing actually today. 
Um, <clears throat> so when I do my tables and I square everything up, obviously epoxy gets behind everything and you have to square everything up and get rid of the uh, pieces. And I've just been stacking them outside. As you know, if you know it's 110 degrees out, everything starts to tend to warp. And um, when you go to cut them up, you can't you can't burn epoxy, so you got to cut them up and throw them out. So, <laughs> not with that attitude. Know, we have this. We have these. You know, <laughs> I have these seven foot uh, cutoffs from all my tables and shit outside. So I'm like, all right, I got to cut these down into manageable pieces to put them in the garbage bags. They're all warped and stuff. So today, I actually had oh. the oh shit moment of. I was cutting all these on a miter saw and some of them were sketchy and I was just, yeah. So, you know, you know what happens. So you, yeah. People can't see been there, done right that. <laughs> so a couple of them did it and I got through the pile, you know, without cutting my hand off. But uh, yeah, I think that was the closest thing. I've been really safe. Um, I, Mike saw me, he, uh, we had a little bit well um, discussion about, you know, people with their safety stuff and uh I'm like, there's no point in being a hero without using a push stick. I don't care what anyone says. Use the damn push stick. It's just, you know, it's just, it's stupid not to, if you got it. So, uh, I don't know. I think that was the biggest oh shit moment I've had le recently. Um, nothing serious. Pete, what about you? Oh, hello. Uh, I have several. I'm like Dan, but a little less crazy. Oh, no. Well, no, I just, I've had time to think now about about them and like thinking i'll say three so like thinking back to like when i was first starting out uh most of us had like some kind of like contractor saw uh or like those little jobs really we all started with like job site saws first and yep. a lot of times they were on like on carts so we can move them around and you know first time i could like really remember doing that is like cutting hardwood on like a dewalt saw that like dewalt job site saw with no outfeed table while it's on casters that aren't really well locked and the thing's starting to move on you and you're just yeah. like, ah, like just so you feel like, what do I do? You pucker so hard you can make diamonds <laughs> and like you figure out like, oh, I can turn this off or whatever. But like, it's scary when you're like trying to like, ah, and then like you reach up behind the saw to try no. to grab the, it's just oh. like, I remember little, doing that when little, I was first. A little reach around. I was like, oh, okay, I need to build something. That's what I built my, uh, my little outfit table for it. Like where the whole thing was built into a four by six foot table way better uh that was like the first time i remember being just like what am i doing this is so stupid there has to be a better way um a more recent one this is about two years ago me and emma are gonna get married i i'm like i want to make our did she uh, did you end up getting married to her i did I, spoiler yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes um yep uh she signed a prenup it was all good so uh <laughs> no i was making the uh, the ring box, but it was made out of burl. And I was just like cleaning it up, cleaning up on a sander. I got it cut down to size on the table saw, uh, opened up and all that. And at some point I was just like, oh, I want to clean up this cut. Let me take this burl small, like two and a half inch by two and a half inch box that's burl to the joiner. Oh. <laughs> um, I still haven't found the other piece. And I've moved out of that shop now, so I don't know where it went. It's it's gone, uh, and I remember just losing it. I was like, I think what? I've heard this story before, and I yeah, love it I've every told time. Before, I'm like, what, what was I thinking? And pearl rocket, and <laughs> you pearl rocket basically. Do not do that. No pearl. It's like it's like running end grain through a joiner. Insane. Um, the last thing is, and it's this. This isn't more like an event, but Dan kind of made me think of it. I mean, he kept dropping stuff on his foot, but anytime I'm in the shop. And I'm like, like, I'm telling myself like, no, I'll just, let me just do this one more thing, but you're just not in a mood. You're just not freaking having it. Like you're in a shitty mood. You're tired. You're annoyed, whatever. Like you're just like there, but you want to get that thing done. So like you keep working and things just go wrong. Things fall. Like you have close calls or like things just get damaged or you try to like fix that one little thing or finish up that whatever. And you make the problem worse. And then you walk away. I've, I've had way too many of those in my, my woodworking career. And it's like when you, if you're not feeling it, if you're not having a good day, uh, if you're not being productive, do something else that will be, if you need to still obviously do stuff like this is your day job, do something else, like step away from the thing, because you're just going to call it. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like at least three or four times I've damaged the product that I was rushing to finish and made it worse and put myself under a worse timeline because of it so to be fair that's why i take a lot of naps 
a lot of naps. That's, and that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. You, say, you yeah, told yeah. me to walk away. So no, no. You walk walk away and then take just a nap. don't don't sleep. Walk away. Exactly. All yeah. right. So who's next? Mike? Did you go yet? I think it's Mike's turn. No, Mike's turn. Please. Like I'd love to hear. For sure, I can't think honestly. I can't specifically think of a moment, but I for sure had moments where I was like setting up a cut and been like, hey, "This is this isn't right," and I, this doesn't feel right. I need to not do this, and I've had to like readjust for sure. That happens often. Like I just have to re do my approach to how I'm about to do this cut or something like that. But I, I've absolutely had moments where I'm like, this is just going to end up poorly. And I'm trying to think of times like that. There, There's definitely been times where I've been like, look, this is really, really dumb. What am I doing? I'm either too tired or I'm focused on the next process, not the process I'm working on or something like that. You need to be really mindful about the operation you're doing at that time because uh, we get ahead of ourselves. We're trying to like rush on a schedule or we're tired or something like that. And if you're not focusing on that moment, it could really go bad for you. So I think, uh, I think exhaustion is the biggest key yep. to a lot of this stuff, but oh, yeah. uh, we got to be mindful of that. So Naps. Uh, definitely been there. I just can't think of a good story or a specific moment, but it, I mean, I, I, at least twice a week, I'm like, Oh no, no, thanks. Next. Stupid. So, uh, yeah, this I, is stupid. Wait, I forgot. I, I, was, I wanted to kind of address one other thing that I started doing recently that he was talking about, which is drinking in a shop. Uh, I do not drink in a shop if I'm running power tools. Um, oh. Let's just say I used to be dumber and maybe I have some beers while I'm still doing stuff like towards the end of the day or if I'm just like, whatever. I thought it was like, oh, nothing. No, there's no excuse. So uh, now what I do is uh, my buddy turned me on to some pretty decent non-alcoholic beers. And if I like beer, I'll still I'll, like I'm I'm drinking. No, actually, no, there's some way better ones, dude. Like really? Odul's is trash. I, I drink this. Uh, Whoa, these are guests. better than this, yeah, though. Yeah, uh, that was, that athletic was a shot. brewing company like this IPA. <laughs> I'm drinking one right now because I'm taking. Wait, 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 hold on. Is it an IPA? A it's an IPA. Really? It's a non-alcoholic IPA, and it's it. Listen, it's no like IPA, but it's delicious. No. Okay. And I can drink this and run power tools and not have to worry about it. So I, I can. F- if you saw my story a couple weeks ago, and I was I was making a joke about my morning coffee, I had no duels at like 10 a.m. <laughs> Dude, i'll, In the I'll shop. send you a link to the, these guys because well that's just one, uh, just one option like if you craving something like that like don't i know there's a lot of people out there like I drinking their beer and working on power tools and stuff so like don't do that that's dumb don't yeah. get hurt no i quit i quit completely so i i do tend to go to um you know i mean i if you know uh semen custom builds um scott mm-hmm. scott you know yeah. um yeah. nashville timber my buddy nick um I meet them for dinner every now and then, and uh, we go to uh, their spots of breweries, and they enjoy their beer. And I quit uh, about two months ago, something awesome. like that. So, uh, hey, good for you, man. Yeah, I hey, just man. I was like, you oh, know yeah, what? he does it. I can good for still... him. I do it. You make fun of me every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes you just need no duels. Um, actually, no, I did. I did have. What did I have? I had two Stellas, I think, in the last two months. That was about it. I'll let it slide. That's enough Stellas yeah, for a lifetime. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'll, I definitely want to try that IPA. But no drinking in the shop. I do agree with that. I don't want to. I'm not shitting on anybody, but you know, I just don't want to see anyone get. Yeah, I really feel like hard. I'm being attacked. Do it I when just, you're cleaning up. I don't after yeah, you're done. I don't want to see anyone. What about get sanding? Hurt. Sanding. Sanding, can sanding, drink. Fine. sanding fine. can yeah. drink. Okay, Absolutely. that's when I that's when I tend to do it. If I'm doing something, lost his whole hand sanding. He just wouldn't <laughs> stop doing it. Or during glue ups, maybe that's why I dropped the board yeah. on my ankle. <laughs> There's just a board stuck to your chest. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you pinched your skin in it. Uh, it's a really oh, tight okay. joint. Anyway, all right, that's ridiculous. Uh, the next question is from uh, Toma, our friend from France. <laughs> we love Toma. Here's his question. Yeah, pl- get your ears earmuffs real tight there, Andrew, because yeah. it's about to be crazy. The accents, definitely. <laughs> Love the music. French. Hey guys, it's Thomas from France, and I have a question for Andrew and you guys. As Pete said in the last podcast, it's time to get ready for Christmas. So I'm planning to make my very first batch of cutting boards to sell on my Etsy store. From what I saw on Andrew's Instagram, um, you make a lot of cutting boards, but some of them are end grain and the, some others are long grain. I always always heard 
that Engren sorry, was better, but is there really a difference between the two of them? And also, I saw on the internet some boards using uh, exotic wood species like Purple Heart or even Wingy. Wingy? 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 I don't know. Um, from what I know, those kind of food are, have chemicals to protect them against bugs when they are alive. So I was wondering if it was really safe to use as cutting board material. I know that the French, like FDA, recommend only certain, certain type of wood like walnut, beech, elm or poplar. Uh, what do you think of that? And yes, that's it for me. Thank you for your answers and have a great podcast. Bye. Well, All right, Andrew. This is like geared towards Andrew. I mean, the question is mostly for Andrew. I guess it's for all of us. He said for all of us, but I mean, you're our guest. So I'll, I'll cover. I don't understand what first. he said. I have ex I have explained <laughs> this a thousand times to uh, especially people at um, craft fairs. They the French. They typically don't. Yeah, <laughs> they typically don't know <laughs> the 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 accent's awesome. By the way, um, he's great. So love that guy. The, uh, I've explained this a thousand times to people because um, there are very. It's a it's a there's a lot of tears um, with <clears throat> cutting boards. So. Uh, first of all, you have your uh, face grain, you have your edge grain or long grain, as he would say, and um, end grain. So basically, I like to go with end grain at all times. Um, I do the other ones. I do more edge grains uh, than face grains, like just because I don't like the thinner boards. I like to have them uh, a decent thickness just because uh, durability, warping, stuff like that. I would rather have it um, thicker. So especially if I'm going to have them outside at these craft fairs and stuff like that, they need to, um, they need to be able to hold up to sitting out there and not warping all over the place. Um, I do have a certain temperature that I tend to start bringing my catalog instead of boards. Um, but anyway, I never grains, thought about that. That's a pretty yeah. good point. So my last show, it was 95 degrees and it was about 60% humidity and it was disgusting outside. Um, I brought, I went to Office Max or Office Depot and I had them print out um, 40 of my items that I had in stock and pre-order. And um, I brought a catalog of everything that I had and I didn't get any sales that way, but I did have a customer actually just order a bar. I went and picked up the deposit yesterday. It's a, a full river bar with the actual bar itself underneath um, a full build. So I did nice. get something out of it. It was, yeah, I don't know if we, do we, do we discuss prices on here? You can, sure. yeah. yeah so it's, you want. It, it's a it's a seventy five hundred dollar bar, and it's oh, uh, nice. it's nice. right here locally. Uh, beautiful house in Bellevue, uh, which is a town in Nashville. Wait, what? So. Wait a minute. What? No, 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 no. not yeah. Bellevue. It's Bellevue. Bellevue's in Bellevue's where Dan lives. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, that's right. Yes. Bellevue, Bellevue, yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. So um, it's like it yours, is, but it's not behind you, Dan. <laughs> it is a um, <laughs> it is a Nashville address. It's a uh, you know Nashville, uh, Tennessee, but uh, they call I don't believe you. They call it Bellevue. Um, <laughs> wait, is it spelled B E L L E V U E? Yep. Oh, yep. there you go. That's the same thing. Um, <laughs> anyway, beautiful house. This um, is crazy. <laughs> it's pretty others. nuts. It's pretty nuts. Thank you. It's pretty nuts. Um, <laughs> he was waiting for it. So uh, one one thing came out of it. But uh, anyway, back to the end grain. So I always go for end grain. I really, really like to push that um, just because of the durability and the um the patterns first of all uh and grain yeah, you can get way nicer. more creative right also so much nicer um and it also keeps your knives sharper so it's gonna be a little hard to explain because i like to talk with my hands i don't know what to do with my hands like ricky bobby but uh it's it's more like if you cut into a paintbrush that was standing up vertically and you separate the fibers and you take the knife out and everything comes back to place. It's basically what, how an end grain works. So it keeps your knife sharp and it also leaves less scratches in the board, as you guys know. And um, that's really yes, why I knew this. That's really why I go back to this. That's really why I go back to end grains. Um, that's why I call it self healing because, like, as you cut, it just keeps moving the hairs around. <laughs> that's so good, exactly. Dan. Um, <laughs> of course, everyone knows this. <laughs> um, 
you know, they all, the, the downfall of them is they're uh, a lot more expensive and they're depending on what we're doing. If we're talking about patterns like weaves and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, I've done the, I've done the Feldhaus weave and. Oh, that that's was, a crazy weave too. That was, uh, I, I think, think the, I remember seeing you post about that. Actually. The chain mail. I think yeah. that was a 12 step board. Uh, 12, 12, a, 12, the board's uh, quitting drinking too. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I added end caps and a border and stuff like that. So there was, I think it was 12 glue ups total, but, uh, so you can, you can get as crazy as you want with these things, but, uh, really it's durability and it's, uh, you know, uh, aesthetics and it's, they're just the best boards, um, long grain or edge grain. Uh, they're more affordable because it's typically one glue up and, uh, you know, you're cutting against the grain, so you're going to leave more scratches in them, but, um, you know, if you're starting out, I think that the best thing to do is to start out easy. Uh, you start out with your face grains or your um, your uh, edge grains or long grains. But I think that there are some rules that really need to be said with uh, with cutting boards. I think that there should be a minimum thickness. I don't like to go under seven eighths if I'm doing face mm -hmm. grain, um, just because I don't want the board to warp and I don't want it to. Um, be that light either i also like to have a little bit of weight and with my cutting boards because it tends to you know slide around the counters and i don't care if you have feet on them but um i like to stay above seven eighths if i can yeah. and then for my edge grains i like to stay around an inch and a half to two inches uh, i do have some mm -hmm. boards available that are edge grain they're two inches thick and then my end grains i've done three inch thick end grains i've done two inch i've also done one inch and actually laminated them to a board underneath to make it thicker because I wanted a certain design on top, but I didn't have enough material. Um, and now I'm doing the inlay ones. If anyone saw the, my, I called it my immortal board and it was the skeleton hands with the heart in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, that one was just, I had to do it and I wanted to just be creative and kind of have some fun with it. So uh, I found the skeleton hands on Etsy and I took them and I wanted to go one above that and I put a heart in the middle. So uh, the heart was Paduk, as it should be, it's red. And then the skeleton hands were Wenge, which is a good point from uh, Tomas. Mm -hmm. Tomas, right? Wenge. Tomas. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Wenge, Wenge, how, whatever you call it. Um, Wenge. A lot. Yeah. A lot Wenge. of people say Wenge. <laughs> I, I called it Wenge at first, too. Um, that's another discussion. Uh, whether or not certain woods should be used in cutting boards um yeah that was his other question yeah dan so, i'd love your input on that too at some point so i just i feel like you can use any wood as long as it's going to be end grain um i have a zebra wood and leopard wood board available right now that shit is so hard and it's going mm. to be it's going to damage some knives but mm -hmm. I love the way it looks. And I know that basically anyone will cut on anything. They'll cut on plastic. They can cut on leopard wood and zebra wood too. I don't care. Um, but if it was end grain, I kind of treat any wood except for pine uh, the same or and maybe did, oak too. Did he mention poplar? poplar. Did. I yeah. don't know, but poplar. He said, is he said not. France, the, the France FDA, whatever that. Yeah, Euro yeah. Is. F F D A. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He said that you want to do a hardwood, ideally. Walnut, beech, and yeah, poplar. Elm and three. poplar. And I wouldn't use elm because that is an open celled oh. wood. I would not use elm yeah, personally. It's, it's I'd do oak. So well, I do white oak, not red oak, because no. white oak is closed cell. Um, what about so actually isn't wait, is elm elm's a certain type of maple, right? Isn't no, elm is its own species. Elm is elm, own... elm is an open cell. Well, I mean, Very walnuts stringy. open cell. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you can't put what you can put white oak outside. You can't put walnut outside. It's better for keeping stuff. It's a closed cell wood. It's not, yeah. it's an open grained wood, but it's a closed cell wood. Gotcha. I never used but, oak in any of my cutting boards ever. I um, haven't either, but I would use it either. over. Coward. But I have seen uh, guys like MTM Wood, if you know who that is on YouTube. Um, yeah, he's, he's that Russian guy, right? Yeah, he's out of his mind with these He things. does some amazing patterns. Amazing. And he used bog oak for one of his end grain boards. Straight up bog oak. Nothing, nothing else. And it was one of the most incredible boards I've ever seen. Uh, actually, he he wooden laid 
He would have laid maple into it, I think. But anyway, it was bog oak. And you can imagine how expensive that cutting board was. Was it super dark? The bog oak? Oh, it's like yeah. usually black, right? Like oh, super yeah. black, yeah. It looked like it looked like a Wenge board, but it didn't have like those tiger stripe. The stripes. Yeah. yeah. Uh super cool. But yeah, I'd say for uh for starting out and putting your stuff on Etsy, I'd say stick stick with the easy stuff first, and then you can, you know, evolve into building a cross cut sled and um doing end grains and stuff like that but quality and grain is definitely the best for sure agreed dan well since i feel like pete was baiting me and andrew is he is a master baiter. i am the master <laughs> you guys ruined my joke oh, uh, <laughs> andrew andrew pretty much touched on everything so i will say uh pete have pete and i have a long standing uh disagreement here i oh man believe that white oak and ash are both very good for ingrain cutting boards. And I Fight value me. our friendship and hence will not be speaking. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I just I don't I, agree I, with the ash part, but I do agree yeah. with the white oak part hundred percent. For me, ash like, is fine. So what is what is the gripe with uh with with ash on engrain and uh, as opposed to white oak? I know you said both, but you know, well, there, one's the one's open cell and one's closed cell. That okay. makes it's a di they're both ash open, is grain, open cell, so to speak. Open but cell, it's like, very, but so like, is walnut. Yeah, it's the same as walnut in my opinion. I mean, it's you're not going to get that much penetration where it's going to cause a problem uh, for you, like. I think on an ingrain like, board, be I would rather I would be fine. I mean, ash is fine. I mean, most of those boards are going to be Absolutely fine on an fine. ingrain board. It's way way tight. I mean, it's the it's the compacted straws exactly conversation. That's what all but trees they're are. so compact, it's not like things are getting in there. But when you turn it on its face grain, you have the open grain. That's where you're going to get crud in there. Open grain. I mean, if it's ingrain, I mean, whatever board is going to be whatever, it's going to do really well, except for like a softwood. Like a true heartwood is going to be good. I can't believe they have poplar on that list. That feels like it's just going to slurp up Very, any level. No. They, poplar. Is there no poplar good. like a little more different? Like European poplar? It could be. I mean, there's a bunch of different poplar species. I mean, Mappa, yeah, Mappa is poplar. poplar. Mappa uh, burl is, is poplar. I mean. Yeah, black poplar. So, yeah. Uh, but that yeah. shit's ultra soft. Ultra soft. Yeah. Um, so po isn't pop like regular poplar is considered a hardwood, isn't it though? Yeah, poplar is a hardwood. Yeah, it is a hardwood. Yeah. Just a hardwood isn't the difference between a hardwood and a softwood is that softwoods are cone bearing trees, and no, it has nothing to do with the hardness. Yeah, hard hardwoods are are conif are not coniferous. coniferous. They are deciduous trees. Deciduous. They they change seasons in the fall. And softwoods are cone bearing. They have pine cones. They have some. They're coniferous. They bear cones. They're evergreen. Like, yes, they they never they don't change in the in I the think fall. Uh, they don't change colors. Old growth like fir is technically harder than it's poplar. It's harder than it is definitely pop harder hardwoods. than poplar, yeah. but it is a yeah. softwood. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah. I I I have never used poplar in any of my boards and good that, man. You never will. I never will. You'll never see a cold brew board with poplar in it. Or oak, I don't think I'll ever use either. I'm doing oak and poplar now just to piss off the I, with the, with <laughs> the PBC inlay. With a really... PBC inlay. Yes. There you go. I really don't like poplar. It is really ugly wood. Like I don't like it just at all either. Real ugly. But it smells bad. I will say, I don't notice the smell. I mean, it does Ugh. smell bad. I just don't notice any of it anymore. But I think all my senses are all jacked up from processing wood and stuff. But um, and the eighties, like and the eighties, right? <laughs> I think, like, but when it comes to like finishing poplar with like a paint grade, it like I'm doing pigmented lacquer on it. It just takes it so nicely. It, it's so smooth and even. And like if you prime it and you do like a pigmented lacquer or a paint over it, it just takes it so well. There's rich really man's nice. pine. It's not rich man's pine. It's just <laughs> nope. the same guy's but pine. It's it's, no, it's, I know, but if I, it's if so if cheap. I, <laughs> if I have a choice between like just just pine or poplar uh, for like well, yeah, shells, whatever, poplar I'm going with poplar for sure. Yeah, yeah. It definitely. Uh, I think it's a lot better. And then I'm painting it. Um, and the other one that's good is uh with it is uh that general finishes black polyurethane oh man that stuff's sick on poplar it works so good anyway that's a completely different conversation but yeah i mean i agree with dan i think white oak's good but on an ingrain board i think that i mean it's just such a better way to go for boards if you're gonna do boards i don't know 100 percent looks better like too. andrew said it's just it's more work yeah, yeah. you gotta pay for it pony exactly. up baby i had um i so i there's there's a lot of guys that sell them for 
um, not enough. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into them and people don't really get it. So, uh, explaining to your customers, if they're ordering a cutting board, I like to give them the option. You know, I, I explain to them, I say, here, there's three steps of boards. Here's three different sets of prices. And this is what you're going to pay if you, uh, want to go with this. So, you know, a lady wanted a a cutting board. I actually delivered it. Did I deliver it today? Yeah, it was today because I stopped and got lumber. Um, it was just a regular, End grain, hard maple, uh, 12 by 20, 12 by 18. It was 300 bucks. I mean, that's, that's, you know, I, I think yeah. for me, that's a, that's a decent price. That's, uh, a good price. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like I sold my most expensive board last week, which was the immortal, uh, it, bleh, the immortal board. And, um, I had that up on my, on my website for 700 and I ended up running a quick sale and I decided to take a hundred off and someone bought it right there 600 bucks for yeah. a cutting board and it was a lot of work that went into it and it's truly one of a kind but um you can spend a lot of money on a cutting board feldhouse I do, sells his I, boards for 800 yeah i do like uh for ingrain boards i do a hundred dollars a board foot that's my number without like any engraving or anything like that that's just the number that actually is 300 for a for a 12 by 18 uh okay. ingrain board is Same. 300 bucks that's what i charge typically yeah. if it's like a face grain i'll do like 65 mm-hmm. and then if they want an engraving at 75 i just go by board foot it makes it really easy that's the thing i use yeah okay um so that's just that's but uh it's, but i don't do a lot of them i don't i don't i try not to just do them anymore they're just you start doing so many of them they just start becoming a thing you're just doing so many boards and it's great if you got if you're the, set up for it yeah set up, yeah if you're like if like you're geared for that and you can do it like there's so like there's so many folks in the community making such good money on them and it's like man that is that's really cool to see that for sure but I wanted to bring up this story. You were talking about trying to explain to your customers about the pricing. And uh, I got to like really dance around how I'm going to explain this because a gal asked me to price up this table and uh, I got the job, but she was like, Hey, I just want to tell you, be really straightforward with you. I've got this other guy pricing up the table as well. I was like, Oh, that's fine. Uh, oh, that's no. I don't really like pay attention to the competition. I just don't have time mm-hmm. for that. But uh but I, I know who the guy is and I got to really be, really be careful here because <laughs> he's in the community. He, uh, it's no one you guys know, but on, on his, uh, we'll say his website on his website, he has his portfolio and on his boards, he does all his juice grooves by hand. No jig. Oh, <laughs> oh what? so they're like this. Oh no. <laughs> and like at the corners, there's like, straight like the bit obviously straight away and it's on like 10 of the pictures of his boards that's his illegal page. come on that's yeah. illegal. i was like after i show you these pictures i legally have to call the cops but i wanted you to see these i i sent her this to is not his evidence site. yeah I, was, <laughs> I sent her to his site and i was like i just want you to know like this isn't the same thing but this is the kind of quality you're going to get at that price point like this this is what he deems to be good and acceptable um and I really, I kind of hope he doesn't listen. I'm not calling him out. No one knows who it is. So, uh, yeah. or her. But, yeah. <laughs> this individual who is a human may or may not listen. No, they, uh, I, it's really, no, but that's bad a good work. thing like, to point out. I mean, I mean, if it's they're really willing bad to work. overlook that tiny thing. Yeah. Oh, they're going to overlook. If they're not overlooking it, they're showing it in their portfolio. Yeah. Exactly. And it's a tight shot. Like it was a tight shot. <laughs> Oh, look that. at this. It, it was like, look how good this is. And it's like, oh no, use, you have like a learning disability. Oh. So it was, <laughs> oh no. It was it was like uh it was really it's really bad pictures. So anyway, it was it was the jigs aren't it's hard tough. To, it's hard tough to when make. people see a number. They yeah. they see a number and that they determine that is the value in their mm-hmm. mind all of a sudden. It makes it really yeah, hard. Yeah, that's when, all they see. They all yeah. the see is the val- the number, and that becomes the value of this project. Is the lowest number becomes the value of the project, and it's really hard as a person, as a business owner, or as anyone who's doing anything trying to sell your product out there. Um, and we had that question. What, was it? Pete, it might have been in the pricing class when someone asked like about competition. I think it was in the pricing class. Yeah. Someone asked like, "How do you factor in your pre- your competition?" I don't even think about my competition. Like you just can't, we don't do the same stuff. We don't do the same thing. There's no like competition. Like I just give them my price for my thing, but this was an instance where like, I really felt like I needed to, <laughs> I really felt like I needed to share with this. I wasn't like, <laughs> it was such an obvious concern. Like it's such bad work 
do you really want to trust this person to make you this table? Like, no, you don't. So sometimes those problems fix themselves. But anyway, it, yeah. I know Andrew and I have had this conversation a bunch of times about people in the community going real cheap on things. And yeah. uh, look at the make, river like, tables. Well, it's not just that. It's just there's people who have um, they have a full time job and they do this also. And that's great hobbyist but pricing. They, like for fun it's hobbyist pricing yeah. yeah so for them they don't need to make a margin yep. and it's really tough and then when you start it's like at the point now where i'm literally at the point with the guys my burden rate my cost to have me sean and matt all working like i need to hit a certain revenue threshold a day or things start to get kind of weird so like now i'm starting to look at projects and be like i don't even want that job anymore because i'm not going to hit my dollar amount like I, I could tell them, hey, yeah, we'll do you a cutting board, but I have to hit you with my shop one day rate. And no one wants to pay that much for a cutting board. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like really $13, tough on those Thirteen thousand dollars you Yeah, the, yeah the but look at my is... juice grooves. Yeah, but the juice grooves, there's no there's no zigzaggies. You See, know the mean? problem is all these hobbyists, they're 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 also most of their customers are family and friends, which yes, that's right. that's when you get into the pricing trap. Uh and I think most of us have at this point. It's apples and oranges. It. It's not the same. It's we not don't, the same. Yeah, You're not like, we don't, same we, almost want to i almost want to charge extra if it's family and friends because <laughs> like i, I don't want to like give them the price i want them to know my price now uh and i've, I've been telling conversations. i've been telling uh family and friends like they'll reach out and ask me if i can make them the thing and i'm like you know what you pay for the materials you come over and i'll walk you through how to how to do it i'll help you and we'll work together Ugh, that sounds horrible i don't have a <laughs> A bunch of employees mm -hmm. running around. I, I but can, you have a you yeah, have a bunch of commissions and stuff running yeah. around. Yeah, I mean, you, you're busy. I feel yeah. like this is easier, and people will walk away from that more than they will. Oh, be. you're you're putting it out there for them to say no to. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you yeah, a bunch we, of vertical we got the one infinity. To make. What's that? Got we got the one infinity. Yeah, got employees. That's employees. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, he does I misunderstood you, Dan. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. You bring everything over here. I'll show you how to build it, and they immediately want it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They they talk themselves out of it. Yeah, that's, that's, that way that's, I'm not saying no, but they're the ones saying no. Like, <laughs> eh, maybe not. Okay, that's why I try to like. That's so the, the the lady that went yesterday about that bar, uh, I went over there and I was just kind of looking around. I mean, first of all, it's in the basement, so I'm like, all right, I got to make sure I can get this thing down there, uh, so I could you know assess the situation. But uh, while I was there, they were you know we were talking about the process, and it's kind of hard to explain it. So I kind of like to show it, and I showed that video that I posted of the this table the, the moon dust table and it's a lot easier for someone to understand and go holy shit i mean i know i know it's a lot of time lapses and there's a lot of steps that aren't in there but like even from just seeing that much of the process they start to understand like okay there's a lot of work in that so uh, i do have one of those felt house chain weave uh boxes and it's a full wrap around everything matches and then you take the lid off which is also custom and i have a weave in that too but you take it off and you look in the inside and everything matches on the inside as well everything's mitered and it all matches up so you know when someone looks at it and they're like oh that's really cool that you painted that and i'm like ah. right. so you're i take up i take up the uh i take out the video of you know when i was cutting the diamonds out of the um out of the blanks on the table saw mm -hmm. and i show them that and they're like it's all wood. And I'm like, yeah, that's why it's twelve hundred dollars. Like, yeah, that you're you're selling something that a woodworker understands to a person who does yes. not do woodworking. That's the hard part about this stuff. Like, you're yep. so, like a woodworker goes, oh, okay, I can see that because they know. That's the hard part, and that's something I work into my conversations in very early into conversations with customers. Like when I know a build is going to have, I think with like cabinet pricing, mm, I don't want to get down this because I don't want to make it sound like I think pricing cabinets is easy. Pricing cabinets is not easy. That's but a with pain cabinets, in the ass. I think people have an idea that this is going to be a pretty expensive thing just because of the size of the thing is there's logistics involved. And I don't think that pricing cabinets is easy, but I think people buy kitchen cabinets more than they buy other pieces of custom work. So there's no baseline. Well, and they spend money on it. Like yeah. A serious amount of it's money okay. on kitchen cabinets. Well, here's a, here's a thing that you could probably, probably relate to. Uh, I've had conversations with uh, potential customers where they wanted a live edge table and they didn't think it was going to be very expensive because it's a live edge table. It's you really don't have to table. do much work. Yeah. All the time. You gotta do I, mean, they don't understand. I That's my favorite <laughs> conversation. There's a ton have. of work that goes into we, that. I actually, that's what I was getting to is I was going to say is what the, the, I try to get it is natural and I've gotten better and better at it, at it over the years, but I really try to in conversation during our first real phone call, 
go over all the steps with them in at least a snapshot sort of way so that they understand that, yeah, I'm not just like grabbing a tree out of the forest and like cutting it real quick with the bandsaw. And then we just throw some legs on there and then we run it to your house and I charge you $13,000. No, there is two weeks of work with two employees working on this thing five days a week, 10 hours a day, getting this thing done. I mean, this is just, that's just how it is. Like that's what it is. So they're, you know, and that my, I've told you guys a story about when I work with urban wood rescue here in Sacramento, customers will bring a slab to me for flattening. And then I always do this sales method. I go, so how are you going to, what are you doing for the finish on the top? And they have no idea. And then I'll, then I'll like get down the conversation and be like, how are you going to stabilize this slab? There's a bunch mm-hmm. of, are you going to do bow ties or are you going to do epoxy? And they don't know. They don't know. They're DIY people mm-hmm. who think they can buy a slab from a slab yard, take it home, and then they're going to figure out how to build a table, something that's taken people years. Remember that white out. epoxy Legs. table you did? Yeah. Or that yeah. you re reflattened re- for someone? Re- reflattened and then refixed the yeah. That guy put uh, twenty eight gallons of epoxy into a five by ten table, and it was not properly cured. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, it was a. Uh, yeah, the whole thing. I we I had to I had to have one of my partners make a base for him. It was an absolute anyway, it was a nightmare. Um people, you it's real I try to express to the people like, yeah, it's really cool the idea of making your own table, but I don't think yeah. you quite understand that like you don't have any of the tools to make this table work. Like it is relatively easy for coffee cuss to build, Daniel Dunlap, to all this people who have tools to do these jobs because we have, you know, I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools. So of course I can make your $10,000 table in a few days. Yeah. But that's what you're paying me for. Exactly. Now you can go do it. You can go buy all those tools if you want and you can buy a hundred thousand dollar table, which makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense for anyone to do that. So, you know, there's, there's all these things. It's like the conversation we had earlier about doing your own oil. Yeah. It's the same conversation. Like this is what we do. We build these pieces for a living and it's about the, the cutting boards the people who do cutting boards they have their they have all the jigs set up in their shop all the things they need specific for that stuff and that's the difference like i'm not going to do my own oil one i hate it i hate doing it yeah. two there's a guy or a gal i can go up the street and i'll pay so them you, 70 I, bucks and it's done i saw you do it on your tractor though that was dope i did everything i flushed everything on that thing. That if thing mike could put a bed on the tractor He'd sleep there. That thing's sick. I love that tractor. I should fly be on that thing all day. No, you're, you're absolutely no. right, man. You know, live edge slabs, they're 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 a lot more work than people think. Uh, they're more work than a, a dimensional table. Yeah. I mean, oh, just, yeah. They just 100%. are. I yeah. did the, uh, I mean, you they guys absolutely seen, are. You guys saw that Paduke table I built. I mean, that was the first thing I built in the shop when I moved here. It's a 10 foot by three foot table. I didn't have any means of flattening it. So I built my own router sled, 42 <laughs> inches wide by 11 foot. On a, on a, on a, on a, that's a one week project right there. <laughs> Just yeah, building was, the flattening sled. You know, and I, I went hardcore on it. I put the bristles on it. I put dust collection in the plate and everything. Like I, I went All right, ham two weeks. on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it didn't take two weeks, but, um, you know, I, I went ham on that thing, but you imagine how much that Paduke slab costs. I mean, it's one piece of wood, 10 by three and it's Paduke, you know, like people don't get it. So I yeah. had, I had someone that actually spit their drink out at the fair that I brought it to. So I brought this 10 foot table with uh, my hand cut dovetail base with a maple stretcher and the rest of it was Paduke. I brought that table in my trailer to the show and put it on the streets of Nashville uh, in April. And oh, brave man. Yeah, with a matching waterfall bench, eight foot waterfall Paduke live edge waterfall bench. And uh, the price here was, I was doing it for 22.5 for the set. I'd have it on my website for 25,000 shipped. Um, so I had someone spit their drink out when they asked me how much the table was. Not on the table, I hope. No, 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 nope. <laughs> they they turned and spit. It was, it was honestly like one of the moments that I was just like, she really just spit her drink out? Like, I was just like, wow. Yeah. She, she can't you fathom have, that at all. Like No idea. No. And, but, then you have these other guys that are doing these. I don't know if you know um, the history behind it, the, the Bibwell tables. So a bunch of those tables that are uh, being built by uh, two makers in specific right now, um, a bunch of trees that General Bidwell had planted out in California and the trees came down due to some infection or whatever. And uh, 
And now they're turning all these, you know, crazy bestowing walnut tables that are 20 foot long and they're slapping metal bases on them and selling them for 75 grand. Oh, they're Damn. selling them. So I mean, they are selling them. Yeah. It's all about the client. And I'm, I, I'll tell you, you know, I'll, t- I'll tell you the two guys after the show, but, um, you know, both of them do beautiful work. I'm not knocking anybody for their work. I'm just saying that, you know, if, if someone can take a, a, a walnut slab that's 15 foot long and put a metal base under it and sell 50 grand, I can take my handcrafted wood, hand cut dovetail stretcher, Paduke and maple base and put a 10 foot Paduke slab on top of it and sell it for 22 five. And no one should be spitting their drink out. That's oh, my yeah. point. Well, that's yeah, it. that's not the, that's not the client. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're just some. Yeah. That's I literally mean, that's literally someone off the street. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> quite it's literally. It's yeah, crazy. literally. <laughs> but still, it's yeah. you know, but, it's the it's the point. You you Let's, said that you should be able to to sell it for that, but hell, you can sell it for whatever you want. Yeah, no, yeah. I could realistically, I could put it up for seventy five thousand. And you know, honestly, at this yeah. point, I probably have a better chance of selling it. You know what? That table's worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. If you yeah. sell it for a hundred and somebody buys it for a hundred, as soon 100. as two exactly. adults shake their hand on the deal and the money is exchanged, that's the value of the table. Exactly. Bottom line. So, yep. and it's about finding what if the it's client. a child and an adult. As long as it's got money. Uh, all Listen, right. Let's wrap I've up had, the show. Uh, <laughs> I, I've had I've had a uh, a kid at a show convince their parents to buy something. I will say that. There you go. See, at a bill, child, right? adult. Child adult deal. Child adult. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been Child a great Child adult episode. deal with Andrew no, Fisher. No, no, stop, 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 stop. No, this is not going to be a segment on the show. Uh, I was thinking no. show hey, title. Let, let's wrap this thing up. We're actually really deep into this episode. We're an hour and 36. Oh, in. what? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, this is a deep stop episode. Me. Stop it. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's get this one wrapped up. Big thanks we, to Andrew for coming on the show. This is a really good conversation. That was yeah, a lot I'm of fun. I'm not thanking him. We he, went too long. We it was easily could have kept going longer. So big thanks to Andrew That's for coming on the said. show. Go, go check, <laughs> go, go check he out. He did Andrew. not say that. Uh, Fifteen years, she's never said that. Go, go check out Andrew at Cold Brew Woodworking on Instagram, and uh, yeah, go give him some support, give him some Hell love yeah. if you don't already. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, guys. I really yeah, appreciate man, it. It was fun. Thanks for being on. It was great. Yeah. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, I was waiting for uh, you, and then I'm sorry you lost that bet. So uh, <laughs> you're gonna send us a check in the mail, or are you gonna Venmo us? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. yes i'm gonna i'm gonna send a uh carrier pigeon with some cash right. outstanding <laughs> that's got to be a big pigeon to carry all that money hey oh, big yeah. quick programming note uh next week we have brad rodriguez from fix this build that on so join us next week for that um i think well we have guests lined up for the next month don't we yeah. uh i don't got have a lot right of guests me, but we do uh, actually i can yeah i we can, can pull uh, it up so right in have, front of me right now uh today we, we have andrew we have brad, brad rodriguez then we have alma from pixel yeah. studio then no podcast. no podcast because pete is gone and then no gone. podcast podcast because i Pete's am gonna get married again two weeks and off then, so gonna... <laughs> and then we got joni then we got joni sprague on uh august 1st oh, nice. that's gonna be nope, hilarious that's one. september 1st september so 1st. joni will be on and then jeff and jess from and Toulouse jess will be on on the 8th yeah jess will be joining us jeff and jess will be here that week so we actually and then uh, that's all we booked out so yeah we've got a couple other ones that i'm waiting for some answers on a couple other things yep. to get on the schedule so ron uh, anyway, swanson ron swanson will be on the show oh, in man, december that would 3rd be, that would be uh, incredible. i'm just kidding i don't have any connection that would be incredible uh, offerman would be amazing i'm just gonna i can never offerman. remember his real name yeah no <laughs> well maybe, maybe i shouldn't have him on the show then <laughs> I can't even remember no, Paul Jackman's real name most of the time. Jack Jack Paulman. Uh, <laughs> you call him Pat every time. Pat oh, Paul dude, Patman. I can't think of one of those uh, without each other. It's so funny. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's funny. peanut butter and jelly for sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, big thanks to uh, big thanks to Andrew. Big thanks to all of you guys for supporting the show. Keep sharing the show and your uh, stories and help spreading the word. We got a. We've had a real nice jump in downloads recently, and yeah. uh, we're really excited to see the numbers up like this. So we really appreciate we're you killing it in France. Yeah, we're yeah. killing it. We're huge in France. So and we'll I believe guys we owe week. a lot to uh, Thomas. For it's that Thomas. One. Thomas is really bringing in the French numbers. He's he's our demographic over there. That's awesome. Uh, thank you and bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Love you, long time. Bye.